Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smith back again with the rest of the reading test. I know we talked the other day about the nonfiction part of the reading test and how that was going to work and the strategy we would use to approach that. But today we're going to talk about the first passage that you'll always see on the ACT reading test and that is what we've been calling the prose fiction passage but is now called the literary narrative passage. And the, the reason I want to explain that is because on most of your practice tests that you're taking, these are older tests, they're retired ACT tests, they're going to say prose fiction. But when you actually take the test coming up soon, more than likely that passage is going to say literary narrative. So I want you to be prepared that when you see literary narrative, you don't get mistaken and decide that the whole test has changed and the world's gone crazy. Make sure that you remember prose fiction, literary narrative are the same thing. So when you get to the reading test, you're going to skip the first passage and move on to the nonfiction passages. Once you're done with the nonfiction passages is when you're going to come back to your literary narrative. The literary narrative is going to be approached differently than we approach the nonfiction section. So this is what I'm going to show you today. So let's talk about it. Please remember that the timing for this strategy is going to be a little different. If you recall, with nonfiction, we looked at using seven minutes as a goal for each one of those passages. Now, if you remember, this is a 35 minute test. With 35 minutes and seven minutes times three passages, you're using 21 minutes. If you take away those 21 minutes from your 35, you're left with 14 minutes. The idea here is that we're giving you, or you're giving yourself, enough time to be able to work through all of the questions without getting stressed or rushed. I do want to say this. I've noticed when I've given this test with no preparation to students, just a quick run through, that most students take anywhere between 12 to 15 minutes per passage. Now, if you're taking 15 minutes per passage, after 30 minutes, you're only done with half of the test, two of these passages. And then you have five minutes to scramble and try to make your best guess on the others. This is not how we're going to get a very good score. So what we're trying to do is maximize the time we have on all of these passages. So by setting a goal of seven minutes on the nonfiction tests, you're gonna end up with 14 minutes for the literary narrative section. Now the problem with this is that that seven minutes is ideal and we don't live in an ideal world. So I don't want to practice with 14 minutes. I want to say that it took us a little longer. I want to say it took us eight minutes and that because it took us an average of eight minutes, it took us 24 minutes total and we're going to be left with 11 minutes to work on this prose fiction or literary narrative test. I hope that makes sense. So understand that when we're doing the timing with nonfiction, we're, we're using time, but we have time left over. If we go over a few minutes, it doesn't matter because we still have more time. But when we go back to the literary narrative, you have 11 minutes and your time ends. And you can't work past the time when you're taking the ACT or they'll invalidate your test. So understand our strategy toward the end of the literary narrative is going to be a little more frantic. And, and that's okay because we'll have a plan set up for how we deal with that franticness and I'll show you what I mean here in just a minute. Let me clean the board. The board's clean and we're back. So let's talk about the literary narrative. Okay, I know this is a reading test. I'm fully aware it's a reading test and, and most people think when they see the reading test, I've got to read. And that's a really big mistake. You're gonna read some, but if you sit down and just read everything straight through, you're gonna be like the people who get 30 minutes in the test and are only halfway done. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is don't read the literary narrative passage. Don't do it. You don't have time to sit there and read it. Yeah, it's a story. Maybe it's enjoyable, but it's, it's nothing that you're going to need to remember longer than the time it takes you to answer these questions. I promise. So what you want to do is go straight to the questions. There are three types of questions that you're going to see on the literary narrative. You're going to answer them in the order that I introduce them. The first questions you want to find, and I don't care if they're question one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, or ten, it doesn't matter, go straight to them. And they are called the, I call them the inlines. 
And I call them the inlines because they always say inlines five through six, something like that. What this does is by telling you which lines you're going to look at, it's kind of like the roadmaps we created on nonfiction. It tells you where to go quickly to find out where you can get the information you need to answer this question. So the first thing you need to do, step A, go to the lines. The next step is a very important step, and I'm going to introduce it here, but you'll want to use it on most of the questions we'll answer in the literary narrative. It's called get context. Now, you've probably heard the word context before, but the best way to get context on this test is to take these lines, you had lines five and six, take the lines and then go back a sentence and go ahead a sentence, and we're gonna call that context. If it tells you to look on certain lines, you really want to make sure that you go back a sentence and ahead a sentence. And if that's not enough information to answer the question beyond a reasonable doubt, you can even go back two sentences and ahead two sentences. And when you do that, that lets you know what's going on around those lines that can help inform your answer. Sometimes, if you just read the lines, you'll see an answer that makes sense. But if you miss getting context, that answer is actually wrong. So it's very important to make sure that you get that context before you move on and choose your answer. These questions will be about 20 to 30 percent of what you see on a literary narrative passage. So two or three questions will be inline questions. Now remember, and I want to start saying this now, at this point that we're working on this, you've already done 30 of the 40 questions on the test. You should be doing pretty well if you've been able to get your times down. Now that we're just adding on more questions we can get right and improve our score, we want to maximize the questions that are easier to get right. The inlines are much easier to get right. I'll tell you, that's exactly how you answer them every time. Read the lines, read the sentences before and after, answer the question, that's just another point that you're going to get. After the inlines, the next type of question I call the character questions. Now, you may be tempted to call these capital letter questions because when we're looking for character questions we're looking for the names of characters in the questions and those character names are usually capitalized and when you see that capital letter it's very easy to go back to the text and find that name listed in the text and then you employ the context strategy of reading the sentences before and after the occurrence of this character's name and that usually tells you what you need to know in order to answer the question. So find the character name, get context, and then answer the question. A couple of things before we move on. First, capital letters aren't always going to be there. Sometimes the character's names will be something like the boy, her father, or even the narrator. Just because they're not capitalized doesn't mean it's not a character question. So if you can go back and skim or scan quickly to find these non-capitalized characters, you're going to be a lot better off than saving these for later. Although some questions about the narrator may not be asking details you can find in one or two sections, but we'll, we'll talk about that in just a second. These questions, the character questions, are usually, usually going to be 40 to 50% of your questions. Now, here's what happens. At this point, we've answered somewhere between six to eight of our last 10 questions. And what you have to start thinking about now is time because the way we approach the next questions, the strategy is going to change depending on how much time we have. And I'm gonna start with worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, you're done with these questions. You've got three or four questions left and you're almost out of time. That's not good. And when I say almost out of time, I mean like, oh no, I've got 30 seconds left. If that's it and that's all you've got for the rest of your questions, 
the third type of question, you're just going to pick C. Just pick C. Make a guess. And that's your best guess on this test is to pick C. Of course, some of the questions are not A, B, C, D. They're F, G, H, and I think I'm going to check because I'm not 100% sure. F, G, H, and J. F, G, H, and J. So with F, G, H, and J, you're going to want to pick H. So pick H or pick C, depending on your answer choices, if you have no time left for the last few questions. Now, if you've got some time left, what you can do with the rest of the questions is you can make educated guesses. And let me explain how we'll do that. A lot of these questions that you're going to see, after you get done with the inlines and after you get done with the characters, are going to be questions that talk about the passage as a whole. Now, the thing about the passage as a whole is that I told you not to read the passage as a whole. I'm going to stand by that and I'm going to double down on it because by this time, if you've gone to the lines or you found the characters and you've gotten context, much like the nonfiction passages, you've read most of this passage. You should have a pretty good idea about the passage as a whole. And when you have a pretty good idea about the passage as a whole, what you want to start doing is eliminating answers you know are wrong. You can almost always eliminate two wrong answers. And if your time is running low, and I don't mean last second panic, I mean I've got, you know, I got two minutes, something like that, you can go through, cross out answers you know are wrong, and make an educated guess based on the last two question, answer choices you have. So, educated guess. It's going to be big because I want to explain. If you're looking at four questions, if you're looking at just four questions out of the 40 that you have, you've answered 36, you've done your best, you want to give yourself the best chance to get these questions right. The way to do that is to take your chances down from one out of four to one out of two because with those odds you should get at least two of those four questions right. And two more points on the reading test at this point is just icing on the cake. It's going to boost your score and that's what we want is a higher score. So educated guess, that's big time. Now, we, we're taking 11 minutes when we practice this. You may end up with more, you may end up with less, and that's why we have several scenarios for this last type of question. But if you have enough time to give your full attention to these questions, let me tell you what you need to do. Some questions will ask about what is said in the passage. And if they ask about according to the passage or something like that, you're going to know that you can find that answer, that the answer choice that's listed will very closely mirror something that is written in the passage. And you're going to want to take the time to go back and find it where it's written explicitly. That means it's almost word for word. But a lot of these questions are going to ask you to make an inference. An inference is when you have to figure out what is stated implicitly. It's not going to be written word for word. And if you have the time, it's okay to figure out, again, using elimination to get rid of answers you know are wrong at this point. If you've got the time, go back and find the section of the, of the, the, the literary narrative that allows you to find out the right answer. Just understand that it's not going to be like a word search where you find it and circle it and that's your right answer. It's going to be heavily implied if you're asking you to make an inference. So eliminate the wrong answers, and then based on what you've read and what you have, if you have time to read more, make again your best educated guess about what is inferred. If they're asking you to make an inference, they're asking you to figure it out. You can't find it. You'll have to read it and understand it. If they're asking about according to the passage or in lines, then you know that you can find the answer in there. I want you to practice this with an 11 minute timer. And I don't mean start your timer and let it run. I mean set it for 11 minutes because after you get through the inlines and after you get through the character questions, you're going to have to see how many questions you have left and how much time you have left. Decide which strategy you need to go with and then use your time the best way you can to make your best choices for these questions so you have the best opportunity to get as many questions right as possible. I'm Mr. Smith, 
and this is how you take the literary narrative section of the reading section of the ACT.